Are you tired of trying to figure out how to prepare for your job interviews? I want to share some powerful advice that has helped my clients with their interview success rates. No fluff. Let's do it. Let's dive right in. First, listen to the question, write it down, and restate it. 99% of candidates answer the wrong question. Now, not entirely the wrong question, but partially. And that's enough to have a huge negative impact on your interview success. This takes practice. One step I've implemented as, pra as a practice partner to my clients is after they answer the question, I simply go back and I said, say to them, what was the question I asked you? Adopt this practice. It's a game changer. We need to make sure we're answering the questions that are asked of us in interviews. Secondly, ask for time. Slow down. Speed during interviews oftentimes will work against you. Try simply telling your interviewer, I'm going to take a minute to gather my thoughts. We'll touch base on how to do this and the importance of this in future sections. Next, common questions. I want to keep it real here. The advice when it comes to answering common questions is some of the worst content online. And most of this time, this content gets lots of views, sometimes millions of views. So what are common questions? They're questions like, tell me about yourself, why, insert the company name, why should we hire you? Use a rule of three, specifically focusing in on three items. The rule of three is really powerful. And focus in on a direct connection slash correlation to your role. Now, a quick AI tip is you can use ChatGPT, paste your resume and the job descriptions into Ch ChatGPT and simply say, Please identify the three themes from my resume that strongly align with the job description. It's a really simple, low-hanging fruit way to get really connected to your skills and the role. And when answering these questions, your time is one minute or less. These are warm-up question. It's a warm-up question, or these are warm-up questions. Don't waste your interviewer's time with long answers, especially giving them a long career history when answering the tell me about yourself question. So let's dive into the two last sections, which are very, very robust. These are tips that I promise if you follow the tips in these behavioral and hypothetical questions, you're gonna have a ton of success. So for behavioral questions, what are behavioral questions? For example, they're tell me about a time when you had a conflict, give me an example of a time you helped improve a process, Provide an example of a time you enhance the overall user experience. Use a method. Without a method, your answers are going to be wildly inconsistent. Obviously, for behavioral answers, I recommend the STAR method, situation, task, actions, results. Now, let's dive into the areas that most people simply miss when it comes to each section within this method. And getting back to what we discussed in the beginning, once you write down the question and ask for a minute, you want to think about the best example to use. You definitely want to utilize your cheat sheet. I'll throw a card up above if you've never created one to use this in the interview to help remember your best examples. But then I want you to think about the pivot point. Specifically, where should I start my actions? Because you want to start to provide actions that answer the question. So after you've taken your time in your situation and task, think 30 to 40 seconds. A few critical items to keep in mind, speak at the fifth grade level, specifically make the story simple and easy to understand. When providing this context, get it down to two or three sentences. This will take some practice, but make it simple. You want good details, but speak at a simplistic level and don't use abbreviations. That can be very confusing for your audience. And then when getting into the task, you just want to keep it really simple and really state the timeline and reiterating what you're trying to solve for. So, for example, let me tell you about the actions I took over one quarter to enhance the overall user experience. The biggest mistakes are way too much context and not making it so simple that anyone could be connected to the story from the very beginning. If you lose them in the beginning, the rest of your answer simply won't hit as well. It will not achieve that desired result. 
And then moving on to your actions, in your actions, think two to three minutes. Let's pause here. Most sample examples you'll see online will have two to three sentences in the action section. How could I possibly know you're a good fit for the position if that's all you share? Past performance predicts future performance. Tell your interviewer what you did and how you did it. Focus on going through chronologically, walking them through the steps, remembering to start on focusing on your actions where the answering the question begins. That's that pivot point piece. For example, if we were to provide an example for a time we enhance that overall user experience, your actions would start off with how you kicked off the enhancement process, not the steps leading up to getting there. For each action, you're going to tell your interviewer what you did. So for example, you spoke with the product engineering and marketing teams, and then the how. The how might be you created a two hour workshop. You spent the first hour going through the previous initiatives, highlighting the benefits and challenges with each initiative via a Google presentation deck. Then you spent the second hour conducting a Q&A session by whiteboarding out ideas with the last half hour spent narrowing the focus down to five ideas. And then you followed up with notes from the session and a survey to help get aligned on that one experience area that the team should focus on. And continue to walk your interviewer through these what's and how's. That level of depth will just give them a great visual of how you work with others and get them to start envisioning you in the role. Now, secondarily, it's really important to not front load. Front load means we spend all of our time talking about the data and conversations, but we skip over the testing, the execution, launching, presenting, documenting. Just make sure if those were steps that were taken that you talk about them, because when we front load, we don't tell the entire story through our what's and how's. Now, as we flip into the results, think 30 seconds on the results. The biggest item to highlight is don't skip this section. A lot of people do. And think of it like the end of a good movie. If the end isn't great, we typically don't recommend the movie to our friends. So if the rest of your answer is great, but you skip this section, your answer will fall short of the desired results. Focus in on three items. Your first result should really answer the question. Your second result should bring in any numbers, if applicable. And the final result should focus in on repeatability. Specifically, for example, how enhancing that user experience not only impacted your team and the users, but the entire company from a process, strategy, money, relationship perspective, et cetera. When you end with the bigger win, your interviewers will remember you. Trust me on that piece. So here's our AI tip. Um, sometimes we forget things. So we can simply plug in all those details into ChatGPT and, and basically say, Please help me fill in any of the missing details from what people typically do in these scenarios or anything that you think I missed. What will happen is ChatGPT will often be able to identify common steps taken in that scenario that you might have likely taken but just have forgotten about. Now, time, one minute, it, it's just not going to be long enough. I simply can't understand enough about what you did and how you did it in a minute, even two minutes. My recommendation is three to four minutes. Now, let's flip over to the hypothetical questions. Oftentimes, these are a little trickier because there's just a lot less data on them and not as common for not as much common information from a method standpoint. So let's dive in. So what are hypothetical questions? Let's just take all those behavioral questions and flip them. So how do you handle conflicts? What steps do you take to improve processes? Imagine you're tasked with enhancing user experience. How would you do it? Again, I do recommend, and I will always push on this, using a method. Without a method, your answers are going to really be on the hypothetical side, pretty generic, and you will start to get really repetitive as well. So I recommend the CFAST method. That's Clarify Framework Assumption Solution. And then what we want to do is when we take time before answering these types of questions, especially during a virtual interview, we're going to want to try and use that cheat sheet. So what is the first question we're asking ourselves while we're taking that minute? We're asking ourselves, have we been through something similar before? 
Remember, hypothetical answers are to be solved like you're in the role, not providing past examples. But thinking about steps you might have taken in a similar situation in the past can be super helpful to organize your answer. Next, you want to go right to that cheat sheet and ask yourself, what are some pre-planned assumptions that I wrote down that might work for this answer? When you're thinking about your past and the role, you can definitely pre-plan assumptions. And then based on those pre-planned assumptions that you want to use, take a look at some of your go-to clarifying questions and frameworks. Again, those concepts are going to be pretty consistent based on the role that you're interviewing for. And put together a plan for your answer. Now, this sounds like a ton of work to do in one minute or less. This piece is going to take some practice, but once you practice it, you'll start to see how easy it is to put the pieces of the puzzle together. And then as you dive into your answer, start with a transition statement such as, I want to ask a few clarifying questions. This announces to your interviewer that you're going to ask questions. And then in your clarifying questions, think about 30 seconds to one minute. Ask clarifying questions to overcome ambiguities and narrow your focus and ask only either or or yes or no questions. Typically, I like about three to five questions and then build in space for their body language. If they're really open to your questions, ask more. If, they're, if they seem more closed off, ask less. You're really going to want to focus in on those go-to clarifying questions, the ones that you've pre-planned for your role, and then just covering any ambiguities in the question. So to keep it really simple, asking questions like, is it A or B or both? Is it X, yes or no? The simpler the question, the more likely they are to answer it. And they don't even know why, but when it's really simple, answers will come much easier to them. Just avoid asking open-ended questions. If you do, essentially you're asking them to structure the answer for you. And we don't wanna do that. We don't wanna throw open-ended questions at them. Lastly, if they tell you not to ask questions, you can simply turn it into a thought process. Hmm, I'd be thinking about if it was, okay, if it was A or B, um, I would be exploring if it's X, et cetera. So once you've asked your clarifying questions, then we transition into the framework by saying something like, before solving, a few concepts we should focus on are, then provide your framework. Think 30 seconds or less. Think of this section like the chapters of a book. You are just providing a simple outline of your critical areas you might want to address in your solution. For example, to improve user experience, I would focus on the overall goals and objectives, historical data, I'd look at the resources, our overall timeline and budget, and the critical stakeholders. Any additional context at this point likely is going to be weak and will not add value. Simply state the key areas you want to focus on without any context. And then after stating these areas, use another simple transition statement like, before solving, let's make a few assumptions. Then provide those assumptions and think 30 seconds. In some senses, this section is most important and critical because it creates a visual for your audience and makes it much easier for them to follow along as you solve. I want to bring back the analogy from earlier in the video. Stories make it easy for your interviewer to understand what we're talking about. So strong assumptions create strong visuals, much like a story does, and it makes it easier for your interviewer to pay attention. But it also allows you to narrow your focus in your solution and solve for something specific. So you're making it both easier for your interviewer, but easier for you too to drill down deep. So what you want to do in your assumptions is basically you'll start by confirming any answers that were provided in your clarifying questions, then create some strong visuals to create that clear picture for your interviewer. Then you're finally ready to solve like you're already in the role. So using the following analogy, I love this analogy. I think it's really helpful. Give your interviewers pepperoni pizza, not food, meaning they should be able to picture exactly what you're talking about in your assumptions. So with the pepperoni pizza, we can see the dough, the marinara, the cheese, the pepperonis. And if you create those kinds of visuals in your assumptions, they're going to start to be in the journey with you as you move into the solution. So 
After your assumptions, when diving in, we're going to pick one or two framework concepts that we think would be interesting to focus on and mention them to your interviewer. So it might sound like, I think we should start by solving for the goals and objectives and discuss how we will utilize historical data, but is there another area or areas you'd like to focus on first? And then the benefit of this statement is, it lets your interviewer know that you're really narrowing your focus to solve for one or two items, not everything at one time. This will allow you to dive deep and provide specific solutions. And when you think about your solutions, think about two minutes per solution and just dive deep. Get into utilizing the assumptions correlated with those framework concepts, because if you can do both those items, your interviewer is going to start picturing how you would do it in the role. Specifics and details are key and will help you to not get off track as long as you're following that outline. It's going to be really, really powerful. Now, at the end of the solution, say, I could go deeper into the goals and or data, or we could move on and discuss those critical stakeholders. Where should we get go next? Basically, having no transition statement or a weak transition statement, such as any questions, it's probably going to stop the answer. So no generic transition statement at this point. We want to really lead and guide our interviewer down our preferred path so we can keep digging in and solving on the hypothetical side. Now, if your interviewer is interested in you keeping going, keeping answering, um, they're really invested in your answer. But breaking apart your answer is making sure that they're staying engaged. So just giving a five or six or seven minute solution and tackling everything, we're pretty much guaranteed to lose them. Now, at some point, you will want to lead towards measuring success. And you can wrap up with a transition statement like, I think we've hit a natural stopping point. I'm happy to dive deeper into any of the concepts I've already discussed or touch base on a few areas we haven't chatted about, specifically resources, timeline, and budget. Let me know how you'd like to proceed. And so this is a nice way to kind of come to a natural end but make sure that you're highlighting those parts of your outline that maybe you haven't tackled and just again, always opening it up to your interviewer to see if there's another path they wanna go. Now our AI tip, you can use ChatGPT and paste the job description in and simply ask it to create 20 hypothetical job interview questions for you. Then you can plug those individual questions back into ChatGPT and ask it to actually create clarifying questions and frameworks for you to create role specific assumptions and it will really, really help you. ChatGPT can really um, eliminate a lot of the time that you spend in your prep. Now, the amount of time that you spend on these interview answers, it really depends on interviewer engagement. If they don't engage at all, sometimes our answers are only four to five minutes, but if they really engage with you, this could be a 15 to 20 minute answer depending on the back and forth. I know that this is a lot, it's a long video, but if you follow each one of these tips, all this advice, you're going to have tremendous success in your interviews in 2024. Good luck.